I just want you to do the, the teacher scene, like in the best, like, oh, young dude. Grayson Russell in the middle of the Talladega Nights, like, film. I'm gonna turn around, my head look weird. I'm gonna do it for effect. Teacher asked me what was capital of North Carolina. I said, Washington, D.C. She said, No, you're wrong. I said, You got a lumpy butt. She got mad at me and yelled at me. Man, I pissed in my pants. Never did change my pee pants all day. Still sitting in my dirty pee pants. <laughs> Is gone. I haven't been over there. I haven't been to Charlotte in 17 years. Yeah. And the first thing I did was I had some time to kill because I got in. How shows will work is uh, I haven't done a lot of TV before, but it's kind of the same with film. You'll go in a day or two early for like wardrobe fittings and stuff. So mm -hmm. I drove up on a Thursday night, fitting on Friday, off Saturday, Sunday, work on Monday. So I had time to kill. I was by myself. Mm -hmm. And I, I found the hotel where we all stayed. Which is, which I know is like, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but it's like, that's where my life changed, yeah. you know? And uh, the only thing I remembered was this, was a big fountain out front, mm -hmm. it was yellow, and there was a little bald-headed man that worked there. That was it. That's the only thing I remember when I was seven. What, and I just walked in, like, walked around the hotel because nobody pays attention. <laughs> and I did it for long enough, but I was kind of breaking down a little bit, and I didn't want somebody to think I was crazy. So I went yeah. up to the front desk, there was a young girl working up there, talked to her for a minute. Here comes a little bald headed man out from the back. Same and he was like, I was you. Took me around the hall, opened all the doors for me, went back in the laundry room, and they had a picture of him with Houston, who played my brother mm -hmm. on it, cut out and still taped to the cork board in the laundry room of the Hampton. So like that was my like, I'm back, you know, I'm back yeah. in Charlotte. And uh and it was like, well, at that point, it was like, well, I got saved over here, so I'm gonna go back to the church where I got saved. And I'm yeah. in the parking lot looking around, because it was small, that was way smaller than what I remember it being. And then I was like, no, I need to figure out where that house was, just to ride by and yeah. see it, maybe. Yeah. Not realizing that I could, like, it yeah. was for sale and I could call the realtor. <laughs> yeah. And so, dude, we called her, or I called her, and my buddy Mason's, were, I was on the first episode, my buddy Mason's on the second episode. Mm -hmm. So, I left my hotel, moved into his room to stay over the weekend, and he like documented it all. Dude, we got over there. The dude who owned it, like I said, was at Wendell Lee, which is crazy mm -hmm. enough. Um, huge Civil War buff, had a baseball and two government <laughs> documents signed by Abraham Lincoln upstairs. Wonder how Lord yeah, those, yeah, yeah. Those are had there. a live uh, Monet like, yeah. painting. Yeah. Uh, had a harp, which is one of two. The other one's in the Smithsonian. Dude, he had a he had a, a Rolls Royce and an Aston Martin sitting outside. We got done. You know, I'm I'm losing my mind being back in the house. We got done. They're like, yeah, y'all want to drive them? <laughs> Took them around the lake, dude. Which is wild because like, I couldn't read when we were doing Talladega yeah. Nights, dude. Yeah. I was in the second grade. Yeah. Barely, like, just yeah. started saying I could do like cat rats at C spot run, bro. <laughs> I couldn't do, you know, yeah. the teacher asked me what's capital of North Carolina. I said, Washington, D.C. She said, no, you're wrong. I said, you got a lovely butt. Yeah. I'm like, no, man. <laughs> we could just, like, let Ed just talk the whole time. It's not even do a, do a podcast or anything like that. It's just crazy to me, like, how full circle this sounds. Because yeah. you're, you know, you just mentioned, like, you just went back to Charlotte to do this, you know, this new thing you're doing. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, that's where all the Day Nice was. But full circle for us is, you know, we, I mean, two years ago, it was, a t it was a hot day of September, and we were fit or fishing. We were dove hunting this field, and in, uh, near near kind of near Cleveland. Yeah. I'm not gonna say where it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and we see this guy with a I think it was a cowboy hat, and you were wearing aviator shades, and you were walking straight to through this sunflower field. And I got I turned to Eli and said, "Dude, I know this guy. I don't know where what who he is or what face, but I was like." You know, who is this guy? So we, we went around to all the people that were hunting, and we're like, who's this guy, you know, right here? He goes, that's Grayson Russell. He's like, that's the kid on Talladega Nights. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the kid on Diary Wimpy Kids, stuff like that. Yeah. I was like, no way. Yeah. So the whole time we were calling, Texas Ranger! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't hear us at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's funny, I had a buddy on that same shoot um, that uh, was from Argentina, mm -hmm. but he had never been on a dove shoot before. Yeah. And uh, I think Chachi... Uh, Gosh, Chachi but, Averett? Yeah, no Ch Chachi guy. was there, and I yelled across the th I yelled across the stairs. World. Yeah, I was like, "Hey, Chachi!" And <laughs> my buddy was there with our team. He's like, "Is that how you call them?" 
Chachi. <laughs> Chachi. <laughs> and so, like, the whole day we're like, dun, dun, dun. He's like, Chachi. Or we'll, we'll give him a face off. Yep. The 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, seven year old Grayson Russell. Right? Yeah. Goes into this crazy world. Yeah. Right? Straight from Clanton, Alabama. Clanton, Alabama. Yeah. Uh, Population 9,000. So, like, I can't imagine. Like, okay, so we were watching a YouTube video like two hours ago. I mean, and you're at the Dove Awards yeah. in 2000, 2007. Yeah, yeah 2007. How I was still in five. Five, yeah. And you're up there and your arms are crossed and you're on this mic that's, you know, your mic thing's up here yeah. and you pull it down. And you're talking to these guys like an 80 year old man. Yeah. How in the, uh, where do you, first of all, where do you get that from? I, because I feel like I'm, I, maybe after the movie you learn a little something, but I feel like it just became natural. Yeah. Like, and I, I, I keep going back to this and this, you know, this whole bare level thing we're doing is like when we keep stuff natural, things happen. Yeah. You know, and I don't know if that's from trusting God or, you know, but where does that come from? Dude, I was raised by a bunch of old women, man. Yeah. <laughs> so my granddad is the youngest of six and I was more or less passed around between him and his four older or three of his four older sisters. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm awfully close with my parents. My parents were, were in the picture. They're wonderful people. Mm -hmm. It's just when they were working, that's who I was staying with. Yeah. So the better part of the first five years of my life, mm -hmm. like before kindergarten, was with Pop, which is my granddad, or Hams. Okay. Hazel. I couldn't say Hazel when I was a baby. I was first <laughs> grandchild, so Hams was it. Or Bertha or Ethel. Mm -hmm. Or Ines. Mm -hmm. That's just a bunch of old Ines. 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 Well, Ines. Have Ines. Ain't Ines. That's her grandmother. And uh, Ines with the bomb. Bertha was the one I spent the most and time she's with. she's from Alabama, man. too. There you go. That's right. But, uh, yeah, it was, um, it was crazy, man. I, uh, I didn't mean to be an actor. Yeah. I wanted to be George Strait, ride bulls, and draw pictures. <laughs> exactly. At six years old, which I still intend to do. <laughs> Yeah. And um, I started doing commercials for uh, a family in town doing like the owned like the local car dealership. But yeah. like they'd use the cheer squad, dude. Clanton's got <laughs> Clanton's got nine thousand people in it. I'm related to probably a quarter of them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it wasn't anything particularly you know prestigious. I got a Game Boy Advanced SP game out of it, dude. I was happy as a lark. I was in the first grade, and uh, my mom's an accountant. My dad's a contractor. My grandparents. Uh, printed t-shirts it's green printing for 30 years but they're peach farmers for that ran an arcade all kinds of mess um and mom was at her firm and a lady came in and was like hey there's this audition for this will ferrell movie saw an article in the paper the guy from elf is the yeah you were yeah thinking. yeah like, yeah they're like you should take grace into it and dad went fishing and me and mom were bored so we went like that was it that, that was i mean no intention no. of getting i had never auditioned before i couldn't read yeah <laughs> you know, um, and uh, yeah, we went, we auditioned. It was at Clay Chapel High School in Birmingham. And what they had done is they, it was an auditorium full of kids. I want to say there's probably two or 3,000 kids there auditioning for these two roles. And that was just one place they were auditioning. I think they auditioned all over the better part of the Southeast. And uh, they split it up between two dressing rooms. You had the casting director who normally is the, you know, kind of the first level you've got to pass through before you can get up to you know the producers and the director and that whole deal and uh so half of them went to adam mckay and judd uh and so adam directed everything will's done judge produced mm -hmm. everything will's done more or less up through probably the last sherlock holmes thing that did so i mean all of their careers and the other half was cash director and i don't remember her name I should uh so i went her for whatever reason and audition don't remember it she wrote something on a sheet of paper in cursive. Couldn't read it because I couldn't read regular English. Yeah. And on like a she, I went, dude. I wish I had that sheet of copy paper, man. It was just a white sheet of copy paper. She wrote something. She said, "Hey, go stand outside in the hallway and wait for them to come out of that next room. Then you go in there." And there was some like security dude sitting in a metal folding chair outside of it. And I walked up to him. I was like, "Hey, what does this say, bro?" <laughs> and he said, G "Good." And I was like, "Huh? Well, all right then. <laughs> Thank you." And, I can read. Yeah, I could, yeah. And uh, sat there and waited, and I, I went in and auditioned. And then uh, I 
think we ate it like Texas Roadhouse <laughs> after that. And and mom was not Applebee's. Not Apple. Not Applebee's. <laughs> that hadn't happened yet. And uh, and mom was like, I think you know, I think this might be a real movie. Like we weren't even thinking like this is a yeah. legit. Why would be? You yeah. know, I mean, we didn't know. And uh, yeah, two weeks later they called us back for a, a callback cool? audition, and that was in Charlotte. And we almost didn't go, but my folks decided, well, I guess, you know, we ain't ever been to Six Flags. He ain't ever been to Six Flags. So we'll just come back to Atlanta. And, you know, even if it's a bust, we went to Six Flags, you know. And we got there. It was in this gym of this school. I would love to find that thing, figure out where that was. Yeah. And uh, there's like 30 kids there this go around, so not a couple thousand. And I was head and shoulders shorter than all of them. Mm -hmm. Which, if you're auditioning for two kids and the other 30 don't look anything like you, then you probably ain't it. You know, I didn't know that, but my folks did. And yeah. they're like, they're kind of, you know, crap, you know. And when you audition, you know, provided you get to go in the room with somebody, um, you know, if you're in there five minutes, ten minutes, you, ten minutes is good. Yeah. You know, like, okay, you made an impression if they wanted you to hang around for ten mm -hmm. minutes because they got, they've been doing this for three days straight. They, they don't want to see you either in there, you know, whatever. And, uh, I think I was in there for like an hour and a half. And they were just cycling to other kids so is that, through there. is that the video? So we, we, we Yeah, we that's this. the video. I've worn like a blue button up or something now, like that. You, now, yeah. did you know Houston? I didn't. So Y'all acted like y'all did. Like y'all from Alabama. They, from, now, he was from Pell City, yeah. Pell, he's from yeah, Alabama. Yeah, he is yeah. from Alabama. But they were just, they sat me in there. And I remember bits and pieces of it. And they just cycle those other the other 30 kids through there just trying to match think, me though, to the they, they knew like y'all are the y'all are the in hindsight they they had already cast me and they were trying to let y'all know they were trying to match me to a brother that's what the other 30 kids were there for <laughs> and and i didn't know that you know so hindsight's 2020 but that's why i looked different from the rest of them yeah. is because they'd already more or less already had decided on me and want to see kind of who not so much I had the best chemistry with, but but just mm -hmm. who we you know we just gelled with the best. Mm -hmm. um, and then two weeks later, they're like, "Hey, come to Charlotte for two and a half months." <laughs> so Talladega Nights is like one of my favorite, like <laughs> most favorite movie ever. Yeah. I was just wondering, like, what's your favorite scene from the movie? Like, favorite, Dude, like, I'm trying behind to... the scenes, something funny that happened. I'm, tr I'm trying to think what you can remember honestly. that's the that's the thing is i remember like because you're little you know you remember weird things yeah anyway um thankfully by the grace of god i remember the dinner table scene the most out of all of it because and not because it was something big because you don't know that when you're yeah. doing it um but because it took us like a week to wow. do the whole thing and normally like when you're filming like this you got one on me and one on y'all yeah. and we're gonna knock it out yeah well, I want to say, I know it was a four camera shoot. It could have been five. It probably was five. So five different angles? Five cameras shooting the same angle. All singles. Whoop. You get a day, you get a day, you get a day, you get a day. Just all the way around the thing. You know? And so, because, you know, you had enough money to. Normally they'd drop one over your shoulder and one over mine and we'll knock it out. Just to make sure they got the right angle. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, they just took their time with it. And it wasn't five cameras doing all singles, but I mean, it might as well have been. Yeah. And, uh, we would do the whole film. There's probably two takes by the script, and the rest is just. That's what I was about to say. I, I was gonna. My next question was: Is I mean, it was it ad libbed? You know. Yeah. Like. So you like just went along the with only it. scripted line I remember having was the uh, the teacher asked me what's capital of Carolina. She said Washington D.C. I said no, you're wrong. I said you got a lumpy butt. Got mad so at me. So you still know the line. Pissed my pants. Never changed my pee pants all day. Still sitting in dirty pee pants. That's what I auditioned with. Yeah, that was the only line I had. Uh, and the, I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew, coming at you like a spider monkey, scissor kick you in the back of the head. All that was just Will and Adam just sitting there being like, hey, say this. And, and that's, I think, the, the beauty of it, and it's all the good Lord, was that I wasn't, I wasn't intimidated by any of it just because I was a child and was ignorant of what was going on. Yeah. If you sat me in a room right now with Will and John and Ted yeah. and Leslie, Dude, I'd be nervous as cat in a room full of rocking chairs, bro. Really? I mean, well, I mean, it was just you. Because you, you're because you haven't yeah. even seen them. And yeah. Well, well, not not so, not, yeah, well, well, not not so much the, the 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 personal aspect of it, just the fact that I'm now aware of who I'm working with. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because you're you're looking at yeah the you know um you're looking at Will Ferrell in his in his prime. Yeah. 
Yeah. No different than playing ball with, you know, yeah. a professional athlete, yeah. you know, in, in their prime. So, you know, back to, you know, you getting there and, you know, getting saved, it, it, it was, that was midway through. That was r- right before we started filming, I think. Okay. Because we were there for, most of the time, if you've, if you've got a big enough part in a, in a film, They'll bring they'll bring everybody in about a week or two before you start filming just to rehearse mm-hmm. and just figure some stuff out and you know obviously they they brought us along just because we had no idea what was going on anyway um, and I had a bunch of language in there that was scripted and I didn't want to have anything to do with it and yeah, yeah my sure. mom was kind of afraid like we didn't know how to navigate that we knew like okay this is all the good Lord here because this does not happen yeah. you know and was going to Central when we were up there with Central Church of God, which was just, I figured out now, it was right by the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, it was one of those, like, Sundays where you, you all get in a fight in the car in the parking lot, like, on the way there. <laughs> and then it's, like, you know, straighten up. And there was an overflow building because the original one was filled up, which was totally new concept to me because I'd never seen church on a projector. Yeah. Now, you know, now people fly yeah, stuff in all, all, the, all the time. Yeah. yeah. And, uh yeah, went there, got saved. Remember Adam had fallen asleep. I think he was taking a nap like after yeah. lunch, which in hindsight, perfect time to ask anybody yeah. anything. It's like, dude's yeah. discombobulated. <laughs> Remember he had like a white t-shirt. And Adam's a pretty big dude. I want, I want to say, I mean, he's he's probably at least 6'4". He's probably more like 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. He felt like he was eight feet tall when he was seven. And uh, I just went home to him. I was like, dude, or, you know, Mr. Adam, do I really like, do I really have to say all these words? And the man like sat up. I don't even know if like he had sat up like. <laughs> He's laying down. I mean, I just like a child just comes to wake you up from your nap, dude. Yeah. But I mean, I was cute, so I mean, it's probably all right. And uh, I was like, hey, do you really have to say all these words? And I remember him like, I don't know if he got down on one knee, but I remember him having a. He got on my level. He was like, you never have to say anything you're not comfortable with. And dude. Houston was 13 playing 10. He would say anything they wanted oh, him yeah. to. So they gave him all of my crazy stuff. He loved it. And anytime, anytime that like Will or Adam or whoever would think something that was even remotely related to anything like graphic or, or any kind of vulgarity or, or, I mean, just a cuss word, the whole set would like shut down. They'd be like, hey, he can't say that. And it wasn't like a, like I was being shamed for it. It yeah, was very you didn't like, want to do it. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, and I didn't like I didn't even have to, you know, like the good Lord m- made a way for me, exactly. you know, because like I didn't even have to be like, uh, yeah. like whole set shut down, and then everybody came and apologized. Yeah, when I'm writing down these, you know, like these questions and things, you know, yeah, I I, I pretty much just like stalk you for like. Yeah, that's stalk, all right, dude. You know, that's okay. <laughs> but like, there's probably all kinds of I crazy feel... ways for you to stop. <laughs> but um, you know. Talk about the outdoors for a second. Um, for us, you know, when we grow up, I was, you know, I was into fly fishing or fishing and hunting. And for him, he just, just an absolute just stud of a hunter. There you go. And I feel like you don't even have to hunt or fish to, you know, to enjoy the outdoors. Yeah. And uh, I feel like when I grew up, that's kind of, it kind of shaped me. Yeah. You know, that's that's where that's really this whole bear level thing came about. Is like we. You know, we grew up not knowing, just like Grayson Russell, seven-year-old Grayson Russell, we're hunting and fishing, but we're learning stuff on the way. Yeah. You know, I mean, has is, is the outdoors shaped you at, at all of a sudden? <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, my dad's loves to fish. That's that's my he dad. He was gone when that's he was my, he was, he was That's what he was doing when I was auditioning for Tyler Nights. Um, like I said, mom's an accountant, so when tax season, you know, kind of kicks off as it has been yeah. up, up through April. She she always works on Saturdays. So from the moment I could like not fall out of a boat till I was old enough to take care of myself, Saturdays I fished with dad and I was made to. I hated it. Couldn't stand <laughs> That's it. That's awesome. Couldn't stand it, That's dude. That's awesome. Um, and uh, so I didn't really get back into fishing until I came to college. Yeah. You know, whenever, whenever I got to Lee. So I, mean, I was roots, probably, huh? dude, I was probably, yeah. 19 before it was like yeah like i'll go 
I'll go yeah. fishing, you know, but out of my own free will this time. Or with one of the snapping turtles. Yeah, there. yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a totally other ball of wax. Um, <laughs> yeah, so so I grew up doing that with Dad. Um, but the first thing we really did was uh, I was his bird dog at dove shoots, like everybody's. You know, if you've got a <laughs> if you've got a four year old kid and you're like going on a dove shoot, that's the little joker that's going to run through the kudzu and find whatever you know. <laughs> Yeah, thankfully they didn't make me do that. I'd got bit by something and died. But we were we were at this, and I remember like bits and pieces of it because I look, I was like four maybe. I might have been three, dude. Yeah. Like I might have been. I was pretty little. A little taller going uh, to the country. Yeah, um, it was. There's a Hyundai plant in Montgomery now, but it used to be a banging dove field. Uh-huh. And my dad and a few of his a few of his buddies, uh, they called themselves the the fearsome foursome, and they had these hats that they made, and they were their hunt buddies. That was their little thing, and. uh they would sit on this like, I remember it was a barbed wire fence. They'd sit up against a barbed wire fence. It was like a small tree line and just smoke them as they came over. But they were all too big to care about climbing through a barbed wire fence to yeah. go get them. So, I mean, I was small enough. I'd through there. And that was like, my, that's honestly probably my first, <laughs> my first memory. I, dad, I, I went deer hunting with dad once or twice when I was little. And I remember being like, shoot the thing. And he's yeah. like, no. And it was like trying to explain to me like, why he's not going to shoot i can't remember what it was i can't remember if it was because it was a doe or if it was little you know because i mean i would have been i really would have been probably three because i barely could have remembered he just snatched me up took me yeah. um yeah so that's when <clears throat> when fishing was kind of what what he did um and then i didn't really get back into it till i was 11 and started turkey hunting with dad in the sixth grade and that's the first time i, like, I killed my first turkey so anyway we're doing this uh we're doing this this turkey hunting show and Dad's always sworn by 870s. Mm-hmm. So Dad had, I got yeah, Dad has his 870, which I normally use because I was like, "How oh, you said you use your Benelli you just got, yeah. bro?" <laughs> because like we never like had a whole lot of guns. You know, it was that Dad had that shotgun because my granddad bought it for him when him and Mom got married. Yeah, in like '93. Take care of my daughter. Here's a shotgun, <laughs> you know? and uh, I'll find that picture because I found it yesterday, and. Uh, that's all I had. Mom had a little 22 she got when she was 18. Like, that's it. That's all we had in the house. Uh, and um, so he had just got this thing. It's automatic. That's a whole new, like, it's like we got a color TV, dude. Like, it's not, it was big to us. It wasn't yeah. big to everybody. Like, everybody's got it, you know. Yeah. Everybody had one, but it's like, oh, dad's got an automatic shotgun. Yeah. And uh, so he was, I was wanting him to use it. He's like, no, you use it. It's, you know, it's hunting show. You're, mm-hmm. you know, doing it. And it's. The first time I ever ran one that had the two beads that you're supposed to stack, and I didn't know that. So I lined them up. <laughs> and, dude, these two turkeys came out there. Actually, there was three. And they're, the decoy that they had, they called him a... Uh, oh, uh, Funky Chicken. Gotta big, be. Big Pimpin'. Big Pimpin'. Same company. And, and w- actually, what it was is it was a legit stuffed turkey. <laughs> it wasn't like a decoy, bro. They took a, they took a turkey like to the taxidermist. <laughs> And did him up in like a halfway, like kind of strut, like he's starting to. And apparently, it just would piss all turkeys. <laughs> and so they'd like break its wing, like they'd yeah. just go in there and just beat the crap out of this thing. Yeah. And so we're watching them do it for a minute. And this big thing comes, he's walking. Out. I mean, dude, it's like might be 30 yards. Yeah. Like it's nothing. Dude, he sticks his head out like that far. We got a Ferrari sitting here, you know, to the best of our knowledge, opposed to the Corolla we've been running for. <laughs> the past 30 years so i pitch down bam shoot it square in the side and the thing's like whips around and it's like what the crap was that and you know it does its little you know and you know it gets to running and then and so then i'm freaking out because like i thought that was it dude like i'm like ready to turn around and smile you know it's like oh crap that thing's hauling so i shot again and shot it in like the leg and it spun it around and dude then i shot it in the head through the tail bro like it's head come around and its butt did too and so, I mean, it was just, it was wing was broke. It had, its fan looked like that, man. And so then the other two, two, two turkeys that were there ran off. And it's funny because the, the camera's right over your, our shoulder. Yeah, and we yeah. got our leafy suits on. Yeah. And you're seeing like the tree shake because we're trying not to laugh so hard from like that just total crap shoot of yeah. what just happened. And the beauty of that decoy, dude, was like, they got to the other end of the field, turned around, totally disregarded the fact that their buddy's dead from <laughs> yeah. like 
this freaking artillery barrage that just occurred and they're like oh no we ain't putting up with that and just hauled off into the decoy again yeah. and so then we're yeah. like you know gather yourselves in of course dad just like blows the thing's beak off yeah you know when it drops and like i remember i don't know how i would find it but there's a picture like from the back of me and dad like walking with our turkeys yeah. over our shoulder and his just looks like this gorgeous, beautiful animal. And dude, mine looks like freaking Gollum. It's a sack. Dude, yeah. I mean, it's just like, it looks like you ran it over with a freaking garbage truck, dude. <laughs> that's the last time, that's the last time I think I've shot at a, yeah. shot at a turkey. We can do, um, we can do it again, but I think our shotguns are probably way more simple. Yeah, you can do yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, but that's the thing. If you're but, around like, here, dude, we, we can make that happen. But, you know, like now and now, like it was just something just, you know. Okay, you stack them. We didn't know that. And so then afterwards, we're like, something ain't right. <laughs> He's like, we'll take this thing back. It's like, no, I just think you weren't holding it right. But my favorite thing to do is just doves and, and pigs. Just because, like, the pigs can be, like, as low maintenance or high maintenance as you make them. Yeah. It's kind of just casual. Like, yeah. you can go in the village and shoot one or. Yeah. You've been yeah. pig hunting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but the doves are. That's just a. You know, it's so funny you say that. It's like, the people that that want to hunt that haven't dove hunted before, dude. When you get a dove field, it's like you feel this like it's my it's a weird energy. It's yeah. not like I'm amped up like I'm yeah. chasing after a buck or something yeah. like that. But it's like this is just fun. Yeah, like it's just when it, mostly mostly when you know you've been around that field where it's just. <laughs> I mean, I, my gun started over. Yeah, you, yeah, dude. You know? Is that something? Yeah. Uh, the first dove shoot I went on that I could remember that went when I was like three mm -hmm. uh, was it my I called him Uncle Steve. It was my dad's boss. It was very much like his father figure, mm -hmm. and he had this place out in Union Springs, Alabama, that he had like just cultivated for him. That was yeah. like a hunter's paradise, and which is where I killed my first turkey there when I was eleven. And he would you know take him in auger, which I actually think he had a legit power line that ran across one of his fields. But he took a, I, those like little, I don't know how he did it, but those little like uh, clip-on dove decoys that are like on the stick oh, yeah. with the little clips. Yeah. He would take a fishing pole and rig them up to his fishing pole and rear back and sling them up over the power line. And they'd come over the other side and he'd, he'd put like a, I can't remember what size, lead on the other end of it. But when he would reel it in, it'd run them up Stood there up. To, to the thing and it'd stand them up on the thing and there'd be like a little fishing pole hanging from the power line. No. They'd be like, hey, don't shoot the power line. Or don't I've never shoot the fishing seen pole. that. But that was his thing. But the first time he did it, uh, the whole thing exploded. <laughs> With electric, like electric, Oh man! It's graphite fishing rod. And <laughs> 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 so they're all out there with balls. I was gonna say we we have uh, yeah, we so Meg's Meg's mom works for EPB. Okay, she's like one of the head ladies there, and uh, yeah, if we did that, we'd we 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 would uh, not be able to hunt ever yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> and just like this fishing poles in flames, and you're like, oh, <laughs> graphite fishing rod. So we're gonna talk about greyhound for a second. Yeah. So. You went down to Louisiana. Sure did. And did and with Tom or Tom Hanks. Yeah. Oh man, I can't imagine. So talk, talk a little bit. How what was the process of that? Because I feel and also what's the process of anything? Because I feel like you just like get a call or what's so that one was a was a pretty um, like a standard setup. So normally what will happen is when you decide you want to do a movie and you know the studio picks it up or whatever they'll you know they'll hire their team they'll hire their casting director. Mm -hmm. um, and it's usually it, it's usually a woman, but there's there's uh, some male ones too. Um, <laughs> this one just, uh, just happened to be a woman, and um, you know sh she'll usually pick from the myriad of agencies that you know the studio wants or that she likes, and then they'll say, hey, you know I need. They'll have the little character breakdown, which is like a paragraph description or so per the script. And they'll be like, hey, I need. Uh, Six foot two white guy that's got blonde hair and can fence and also surf. Really? And they'll send it to all it's the It's like an Indeed thing, like a little like you know, they'll, job notification. They'll send it to all the agents. The agents will look at them and say, okay, well, I've got these six guys that are, you know, six foot something blondes that can fence and surf and send it back to the agents. The agents, are, or I'm sorry, the casting director. Then the casting director will look at those and, okay, I want to see him, him. I don't care about these three guys. I want to see that one. So there was like a, 
uh, like a little pre-screening process and then you know they'll send you the audition you'll do it and, and most of the time because i've grown up in alabama up until I, I went to school yeah uh you know i would i would tape them you'd film them and then send them off um mm -hmm. and of course once COVID happened now everything's like that gotcha. um which was which really wasn't a change of pace for me at all um but if you had the option of going in the room it's always it was always better to go in the room you know when i go you know try out on camera when you can do it in person i'm at lee i get the uh the audition comes through and it's like tom hanks world war ii film and i can't remember what all it said and i had the flu and this isn't going to be sanctioned now because just how COVID and everything kind of changed everything up. But I was out of class because I had the flu. And so normally, like, when an audition comes in, you might have three days to do it. You might have 24 hours to do it. And with this one was the first time that I had, like, a full day of doing nothing. You know, I didn't have class. I, I wasn't. I was on staff at Westmore at the okay. time. So, like, I didn't have that to go do. So I guess I'll just sit here and build me out of character, you know, and... I'm gonna imagine that his dad works for Paul Mile Cigarettes. He's got a mother named Edith or something like that. His mother, you know, and it's just stuff that really doesn't Does it matter sense? in the grand scheme of things. But it's just it, it just adds a little bit more confidence that you know you can you do kind, it. You can do you it. Can, and you can form yourself into yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this was in January of of 2018, and one of my best friends had just passed away, who was 99. And was fought in the Pacific in World I mean, War II. Uh, was that your grandfather? No, it was totally unrelated. Dude named Frank. Frank, Mr. Yeah. Frank. Mr. Frank. Yeah, yeah. I, I stalked you, man. Yeah, dude. But yeah, so Mr. <laughs> Mr. Frank. Yeah, and so uh, I was actually watching videos of him last night. Funny enough, he was talking about how. Uh, so where's, they, where's Mr. So did the Mr. Frank grow up where you were? Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, the, he was by the time I came around. That that mm. was home for him. He bounced around a little bit. Gotcha. But uh, so Frank shot howitzers, 105 millimeter howitzers in World War II in the Pacific and mm. I just found this video like last night because I forgot about it yeah. and he was like we were in a jungle somewhere and he was like they were notorious for just sneaking up on you at night and just cutting your throat dude and he, and he was like <laughs> and he was like they would do it and he's like they study that and it's funny for like, watching a 99 year old dude with no teeth just you know talking about something that you've only ever watched on History Channel maybe or saw Tom yeah. Hanks do yeah. Storm in the Beach and uh he was talking, he said, one time, man, I was in a foxhole and this Japanese guy came up over the top of me, of my foxhole, and he said, I had my little Thompson 45, and he said, I swung it up, and he said, Grayson, it was a wharf rat the size of a football. He said, I thought it was a human. And the only show I've ever seen to actually get that right was the Pacific, and um, I want to say Hacksaw Ridge. Yeah. Was just the size, because that's what everybody talks about, but I've never actually seen on a film was the size, you know, everybody talked about how big the rats were. Seriously. Um, but, the, but the video I found yesterday, he was talking, he said, yeah, man, we was in the jungle, and they kept coming at us at night. And we thought we had kind of fought them back a little bit, but we just took off running, dude. We were scared to death, and we finally got set up, and but we could hear them down below us. Yeah. And they were crap dude like this yeah. isn't good he's like dude we were we were pretty shook up because like, man this just it ain't gonna be good yeah and he said we looked and it started clucking and we realized somebody had left a rooster <laughs> <laughs> whatever they had run the japanese off they thought they had come back but all it was was they had left a big <laughs> big freaking game rooster in one of their foxholes that thing was just scratching up the jungle and they're like dude we're all about to die and he said all it was is this big rooster come clicking up out of there and i was like dude that's that's priceless man no, but man. uh but it's it's just it's crazy though because you, you 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 sit and listen to this really docile human that's yeah. that's never told anybody about this before yeah. which was crazy it's just like i'm the one he told yeah and so i'm sitting here like y'all are with this just trying to eat it up. He's like, yeah, talking about eating a horse with two Australians. Like, dude, it was grainy, man, but I mean, it worked. Like, you yeah. know, it was good. And uh, they well, there's your movie right yeah, there, Yeah, yeah. He's like, they, they, uh, he was the only one small and fast enough to, to catch chickens. So they got on one of the islands and traded all their sea rations <laughs> for all their chickens. Yeah. But they're like, all right, now you got to go catch them. He's like, oh, you know, went out there and did it. 
But um, when I was in high school, like I couldn't play football because I couldn't get hurt. Not that I'd been any good anyway, but I couldn't get hurt because I couldn't I couldn't work. You know? Yeah. So, uh, but my freshman year, we had a, we had a really good we had a really good team. They called the lights out, and everybody would, they cut on in there tonight by Phil Collins. Yeah. And like that's where everybody listened to to get amped up, and then they went out there and you know beat the crap out of somebody. <laughs> and so got my buddy Co- Cody. We're riding down to Atlanta. We get there. I remember kind of figuring out where to park, and I cut on the 13 minute thing. Of, PFC Frank Staggs talking, dude. I cut that on, went there and auditioned. And they called me back in a week or two and said, hey, you've made the short list, which yeah. is essentially like you're the, the director, you know, maybe top 20, top 10. I mean, it's not that you've got it, but you know you've gotten pretty close. Yeah. And, dude, I'll do hundreds of auditions and not hear a thing. Yeah. You know? And I remember being in, the, in Hicks, in Hicks Hall on the second floor in 202. And I remember hitting my knees crying, man. I was like, "This is it." The, you know, not that I got it, but just to know that, like, man, I made it this far in a, in, a, in a Tom Hanks movie, you know. And uh, a week or two later, they called back, and it was it was the Friday of Valentine's Day weekend because me and Dad were going to go pig hunt over spring break, which is like that first week of March. Yeah. So I was like, "Well, I'm not going to see my folks." For spring break, so I'm gonna go down like a weekend or two before see them. That way, I can go do it with Dad, and not feel bad about not, you know, sending everybody home. And uh, got to my grandparents' house. It was a Friday, and my agent called, and my manager called, and I didn't realize my mom was sitting outside, waiting, like waiting on me to get the call. And they're like, "Hey, you, you, uh, they called me on a Friday, and said you've got to report to Baton Rouge on Tuesday to start boot camp with the Navy and Marines. Clear your schedule for 180 what do you do? days. What do you what do you do for that with school and stuff? Pray. So, we're gonna end on this every podcast, and it just it it came to us before this even happened. But Megan, I've been watching or watched this show called Special Ops. Okay. And it's about um, it's a reality show, but they bring on celebrities and they. Uh, they kind of suit them up. They put them through special ops training for yeah. 10 days. See which one can last yeah. long. Super real. You know, yeah. it's not skittered or anything yeah. like that. Um, but during the during the episode, one of the episodes, they were like, okay, we're going to make you guys write your death note. What a death note is in the military is you like write this almost letter that you send back to your family. And if you didn't, you know, make it the next day. So yeah. this new thing you're going yeah. on and you're, you're making music. What would you say to your your family if today or tomorrow was the last day? You know, I know it's a big question. No, no, I mean, nobody had any more fun than I did. That was like Burt Reynolds' yeah. lasting quote, dude. If I, not that I intend to croak tomorrow, but if I do, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> I've gotten to a point in my in my personal life, and, and, but certainly in my in, in spiritual too. Obviously, that's huge. But mm-hmm. just as far as my career is concerned, man, I, I've been so fortunate to hit a point more or less twice with Talladega Nights and Wimpy Kid that people work their whole life to get to, and by the time they hit it, they're Morgan Freeman doing Driving Miss Daisy, and their parents and their grandparents aren't around mm-hmm. to see it. Yeah, like the people who supported you all the way huh, aren't aren't there to, you know, see that come to fruition. Yeah. And if I never work another day in my life, man, if I stroke out tomorrow because the Captain D's I eat in a couple hours just gets the better of me because <laughs> I'm a little old man, I wouldn't feel robbed. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, little... I've, uh, I've gotten to, to do a lot of really cool things in this life and not that doing cool things is what what life's about um but i've been influenced by a lot of spectacular people mm. um and i've been able to be a a pretty decent influence in, in the lives of a lot of people who are important to me yeah yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't feel robbed a bit so y'all yeah. y'all cry all you want to yeah but laugh yeah. Because, bro, when it comes down to it, I pretty near lost my thumb for hiding turtles in people's bathtubs on campus. <laughs> so we let a pig loose in a frat house. It got loose downtown running down north of Coe Street at 2.30 in the morning and took half the police department to catch and was found in the Bradley County p- uh, pound. 
the next morning with the pit bulls and the Rottweilers. <laughs> Nobody had any more fun than I did. Sober as a church mouse, by the way, in case anybody's wondering. I yeah. think I would have done better in court if I had been drunk. Because at least it wouldn't have come across as premeditated as it was. Nobody had more fun yeah, than I did, exactly. man. Yeah, man. So. I do. I love it. And we, we're all about positivity. And, you know, uh, and I feel like back to the outdoors, like, yeah. that's where my positivity comes yeah. from. It's like, and for instance, like, I mean, four years ago, I didn't even know Jesus. I really didn't. So uh, four years ago, I mean, I was saved. Meg, we went through when I met Meg. And uh, this outdoors thing, you know, got me to a point where I was like, I, I, this guy's real, you know? Well, the craziest thing, I think, and maybe I should answer the, the outdoors bit in this way. But for me, like, you know, you just kill a doe because she was eating your folks' turnip grains, and that's yeah. how they made a living. Yeah. True story. Okay. You get that thing back because you're going to drop it in the freezer and you're, you know, getting the back strap out and you're in, and not in any kind of gruesome way, but you're looking at what makes that thing tick. Yeah. You're looking into this thing that was walking around five minutes ago. And there's this like, and not to overuse the word visceral. Yeah. But for me, it's immediate when you look at every little thing that's in here that's making this thing tick that not only am I reminded of like the mortality of myself and that everything that's making that thing tick is in me who could have designed it who could have designed that, it better that, that didn't happen because two rocks slammed together you know yeah. like I don't feel like there's a there's a a stronger argument there might be but, but for me there's not much of a stronger argument for some kind of intelligent design you know it, that's you know. so true because you know when she used to work you know with and see surgeries all the time yeah all these things i mean there's millions of things that go on <laughs> to make this one make thing that happen at one time <laughs> you know if it's if, i mean it's, if people need evidence yeah i mean it's not just there it's everywhere yeah, yeah. you know but that's that's the one thing for me like when you when you get down in it of of just this whole kind of outdoors experience and lifestyles like yeah. dude you can't that is undeniable yeah. to me exactly you know whether or not I know who to you know what name to call the thing that created this or yeah. not something did yeah.